I think it's important to really acknowledge the people who laid out the vision for the Shorter Council. We're faced with a very interesting set of challenges. I worry, though, that we tend to talk about Trump in a way and the current situation in a way that may actually become counterproductive. Donald Trump is not above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the far right are not above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we look at the last few weeks, Michael Flynn, his session is up. Sebastian Gorak, his session is up. And lo and behold, this week, session, session is up. And we should have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should understand that this is the sunnah of Allah. Every community has to go through the fire of Sayyidina Ibrahim. Every community has to experience the loneliness of Sayyidina Yusuf, Joseph. Every community has to experience being marginalized, being pushed around. Because that causes us to create the capacity for empathy for people around us. It's a rahmah. The second thing is it forces us to take coalition building and community organizing seriously. And that's why our unity is central to our success. In the seventh chapter of the Quran, and I encourage you to go and read that chapter, we should be reading the Quran to live for today, not to live in Mecca. Reminds me one time of a, a, a conversation between Imam Muhammad, Imam Dabidi Muhammad rahimahullah and a sister who was a convert, and she said, you know, I've learned Arabic to make da'wah. He said, no, no, you learn Arabic for your relationship with Allah. If you want to make da'wah, learn Spanish. <laughs> Every prophet comes, of course, with the fundamental principles of belief, which we hold as Muslims as sacred, but they always couple that with a message of social justice. Right? Belief has to calibrate a concern for people regardless of who they are. Allah says, Ladina stakbaru, lil ladina stud'ifu. Those who were powerful said to those who were marginalized, Do you believe in this Prophet? In Nabi, Arasaltubihi kafiru. So without the Quran, you find that the Prophets in their teachings of God, weren't really what agitated those populist movements that they spoke to. What agitated them was their call for justice and transparency and honesty and integrity and truthfulness. And that's why our loyalty is not necessarily to the right or to the left. Our loyalty is to what's right. But I realized something. Allah is preparing us for something great. I believe that. Moses' mother had to lose him for him to become a prophet. Moses had to look for fire before he could become a prophet. Muhammad had to experience isolation before he was a mercy to the worlds. And I believe the plan of God is good. You have 91 ethnicities in this mosque. I said, Allahu Akbar. And she said, do you know what that means? I said, it's a headache. As an imam, this is a headache. Especially iftar time. <laughs> but she said something to me, brothers and sisters, that I will never forget. She said, it means power. It means power. But your community doesn't organize. You have people now in the upper echelons of the White House who are strongly considering trying to present the idea that Islam is not even a religion. Islam is a political ideology on par with communism. And trying to create a rhetoric that Islam is seen as a political movement and not a religious movement. And that could have drastic implications, not just for care, not just for the Shura Council, for you. And we have to admittedly recognize that we don't have the capabilities to take this on alone. So we've been forced by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to think about creating real relationships. So we saw when Jewish cemeteries were attacked in this country, it was young American Muslims who funded to help repair those cemeteries. 
But we have to see as a religious community that we cannot separate coalition building and activism from knowledge and from faith. The knowledge is meant to calibrate the institutionality of mercy. Look at Prophet Yusuf in the Quran. If you worry or think about serving communities in this country, Prophet Yusuf represents every marginalized demographic in this country in one story. He was abused as a child, a 6% of this population. He was homeless. That's about 12% of the population, some say less. He was trafficked as a human being. America has the largest number of sexually trafficked people in the world. He was sold be thumbing in bucks for a paltry price. He experienced a prison industrial complex. He provided a service in prison, and he wasn't even paid for it. And he experiences sexual harassment. He's the object of sexual harassment. And then, of course, we know he experiences opulence. I mean, what an incredible story. But if we're reading that as Muslims, if we read Surah Al-Kaf, we don't appreciate Fa'wu ila al-Kaf is a form of silent protest. If we read Surah Al-Mujadila, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا And we can't see that a woman has an integral right and a responsibility to stand up and speak for herself. And still we have non-profits in this country that have written on their bylaws that women can't be on the boards. And we're silent in the face of that. If we're reading these stories and we're not able to calibrate that into a sophisticated theology that informs us when it comes to activism and cultivating real relationships with other communities and having empathy for the marginalized, I will warn us to say that the Quran will be a witness against us. Because we're not tasked to live the Quran as it was lived in Mecca. We are tasked to live the Quran for Compton, for Inglewood, for the jungles. Yeah, I know about that. For Pomona, for Irvine, for Corona, for Anaheim, for Los Angeles. Our challenge now is to calibrate a theology that doesn't address the differences of old that will never be settled, but speaks to the real problems of this country so that people will see, you know what? These people bring value, added value to my life. But if we don't coalition build, and we don't respect the struggles of other communities, everyone here should go see I Am Not Your Negro. Muslim youth groups should go see that. Honestly, that should be like a field trip. Because if all you do is live theology in the masjid, you can't expect the world to have empathy for you and me. Because the Prophet's life should not be something that causes us to be intimidated. It should inspire us to calibrate faith within the context we live in. That's a challenge. We have to take our egos out of this work now, brothers and sisters. We have to take out the ego, the arrogance, the hasad, the competitive stuff. Because if it's there, there's no barakah, and the community will feel it.